Good morning, and a very warm welcome to you all. Let us begin today's service with the singing of hymn number 181. Loving Father, we thy children look to thee in fear's dark night, while the angels of thy presence guide us upward to the light. Hymn number 181. scriptural selection is from James. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. Do not err, my beloved brethren, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of firstfruits of his creatures. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he, being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Let's have a few moments of silent prayer and then pray together the Lord's Prayer and all follow with its spiritual interpretation as given in Science and Health.
Our Father, which art in heaven. Our Father, Mother, God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable one. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth. God is omnipotent, supreme. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. For God is infinite. All power, all life, truth, love, over all and all. Let's unite in singing hymn number 406. O love, our mother ever near, to thee we turn from doubt and fear. In perfect peace our thoughts abide, our hearts now in this truth confide. Man is the child of God. Hymn number 406. <laughs> Warm welcomes extended to you all this morning. The lesson sermon you will hear this morning has already inspired other congregations and Christian Science churches around the world in Tokyo, Sydney, Cape Town, Stockholm, Dublin, and Buenos Aires. These churches and this church are all branches of the Mother Church, the First Church of Christ Scientists in Boston, Massachusetts. 
We lovingly welcome young people to our Sunday school, which meets concurrently with our Sunday service. There, they are taught the healing truths of Christian science and the practical application of the truth to their daily challenges. Every Wednesday evening, we hold a testimony meeting. After readings from the Bible and from the Christian Science textbook, the congregation is invited to share personal experiences and healings that have come from the study and application of Christian Science. Please join us as everyone is welcome, and the meeting begins at 8 p.m. All Christian Science churches maintain a reading room. Ours is located here in this building, and you're welcome to use it as a quiet place for study or prayer. Christian Science literature is available to borrow or purchase or study. The Christian Science reading room is open a half hour before each Wednesday service and a half hour following each Sunday service. This being the first Sunday of the month, I shall read from the manual of the Mother Church by Mary Baker Eddy, Article 8, Section 1, A Rule for Motives and Acts. Neither animosity nor mere personal attachment should impel the motives or acts of the members of the Mother Church. In science, divine love alone governs man, and a Christian scientist reflects the sweet amenities of love in rebuking sin, in true brotherliness, charitableness, and forgiveness. The members of this church should daily watch and pray to be delivered from all evil, from prophesying, judging, condemning, counseling, influencing, or being influenced erroneously. The words of the solo are from a poem by our discoverer and founder, Mary Baker Eddy.
friends. The Bible and the Christian Science textbook are our only preachers. We shall now read scriptural text and their correlative passages from our denominational textbook. These comprise our sermon. The canonical writings, together with the word of our textbook, corroborating and explaining the Bible text in their spiritual import and application to all ages, past, present, and future, constitute a sermon undivorced from truth, uncontaminated and unfettered by human hypotheses, and divinely authorized. The lesson sermon for today begins on page 40 of the Christian Science Quarterly. The subject is man. The golden text is from Deuteronomy. Ye are the children of the Lord your God. The responsive reading is from Galatians and Ephesians. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all. But is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. That we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. The following readings comprise our sermon. The Bible. Malachi, have we not all one Father? Hath not one God created us? Romans, the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Galatians, having begun in the spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Colossians, we give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us unto the kingdom of his dear Son and correlative passages from the Christian Science Textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. Father Mother is the name for deity, which indicates his tender relationship to his spiritual creation. 
as the apostle expressed it in words which he quoted with approbation from a classic poet, for we are also his offspring. In divine science, God and the real man are inseparable as divine principle and idea. Jesus was the highest human concept of the perfect man. He was inseparable from Christ, the Messiah, the divine idea of God outside the flesh. Does God create a material man out of himself, spirit? The scriptures inform us that man is made in the image and likeness of God. Matter is not that likeness. The likeness of spirit cannot be so unlike spirit. Man is spiritual and perfect. And because he is spiritual and perfect, he must be so understood in Christian science. Man is idea, the image of love. He is not physique. He is the compound idea of God, including all right ideas. Generic term for all that reflects God's image and likeness. The conscious identity of being as found in science, in which man is the reflection of God or mind, and therefore is eternal. That which has no separate mind from God that which has not a single quality underived from deity, that which possesses no life, intelligence, nor creative power of its own, but reflects spiritually all that belongs to his maker. God fashions all things after his own likeness. Life is reflected in existence, truth in truthfulness, God in goodness, which impart their own peace and permanence. Man and woman, as coexistent and eternal with God, forever reflect in glorified quality the infinite Father, Mother, God. Genesis. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Isaiah. See, see from man whose breath is in his nostrils, for wherein is he to be accounted of? Ephesians, put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. In science, man is the offspring of spirit. The beautiful, good, and pure constitute his ancestry. His origin is not like that of mortals in brute instinct, nor does he pass through material conditions prior to reaching intelligence. Spirit is his primitive and ultimate source of being. God is his father, and life is the law of his being. If the material body is man, he is a portion of matter or dust. On the contrary, man is the image and likeness of spirit, and the belief that there is soul in sense or life in matter obtains in mortals, alias mortal mind, to which the apostle refers when he says that we must put off the old man. Identity is the reflection of spirit. 
the reflection in multifarious forms of the living principle, love. Soul is the substance, life, and intelligence of man, which is individualized, but not in matter. Soul can never reflect anything inferior to spirit. This scientific sense of being, forsaking matter for spirit, by no means suggests man's absorption into deity and the loss of his identity, but confers upon man enlightened, enlarged individuality, a wider sphere of thought and action, a more expansive love, a higher and more permanent peace. So far, as the scientific statement as to man is understood, it can be proved and will bring to light the true reflection of God, the real man, or the new man, as St. Paul has it. 1 Corinthians. <clears throat> Other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Christ Jesus. The Gospel of Luke. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead, and is alive again. He was lost, and is found. And they began to be merry. Now his elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants, and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry, and would not go in. Therefore came his father out, and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time my commandment. And yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. First John. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Jesus of Nazareth taught and demonstrated man's oneness with the Father, and for this we owe him endless homage. Let us rid ourselves of the belief that man is separated from God, and obey only the divine principle, life, and love. Here is the great point of departure from all true spiritual growth. 
the sharp experiences of belief in the supposititious life of matter, as well as our disappointments and ceaseless woes, turn us like tired children to the arms of divine love. Shall we plead for more at the open fount, which is pouring forth more than we accept? The unspoken desire does bring us nearer the source of all existence and blessedness. Through repentance, spiritual baptism, and regenerations, mortals put off their material beliefs and false individuality. In patient obedience to a patient God, let us labor to dissolve with the universal solvent of love, the adamant of error, self-will, self-justification, and self-love, which wars against spirituality and is the law of sin and death. Man's genuine selfhood is recognizable only in what is good and true. Man is neither self-made nor made by mortals. God created man. The admission to oneself that man is God's own likeness sets man free to master the infinite idea. The Gospel of Matthew. Then Jesus went thence and departed from the coasts of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not me to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. And Jesus departed from thence, and came nigh unto the sea of Galilee, and went up into a mountain, and sat down there. And great multitudes came unto him, having with them those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others, and cast them down at Jesus' feet. And he healed them, insomuch that the multitude wondered when they saw the dumb to speak, the maimed to be whole, the lame to walk, and the blind to see. And they glorified the God of Israel. Galatians. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Love is impartial and universal in its adaptation and bestowals. It is the open fount which cries, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. If God had instituted material laws to govern man, disobedience to which would have made man ill, Jesus would not have disregarded those laws by healing in direct opposition to them and in defiance of all material conditions. The science, so-called, of physics would have one believe that both matter and mind are subject to disease and that too, in spite of the individual protest and contrary to the law of divine mind. This human view infringes man's free moral agency, and it is as evidently erroneous to the author and will be to all others at some future day as the practical rejected doctrine of the predestination of souls to damnation or salvation.
When speaking of God's children, not the children of men, Jesus said, the kingdom of God is within you. That is, truth and love reign in the real man, showing that man in God's image is unfallen and eternal. Jesus beheld in science the perfect man who appeared to him where sinning mortal man appears to mortals. In this perfect man, the Savior saw God's own likeness, and this correct view of man healed the sick. Thus Jesus taught that the kingdom of God is intact, universal, and that man is pure and holy. The Christ-like understanding of scientific being and divine healing includes a perfect principle and idea, perfect God and perfect man as the basis of thought and demonstration. Let the male and female of God's creating appear. Let us feel the divine energy of spirit bringing us into newness of life and recognizing no mortal nor material power as able to destroy. Let us rejoice that we are subject to the divine powers that be. Such is the true science <coughs> of being. 2 Timothy, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. Psalms. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Depart from evil, and do good, and dwell forevermore. Mark the perfect man, and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. The real man is spiritual and immortal, but the mortal and imperfect, so-called children of men, are counterfeits from the beginning, to be laid aside for the pure reality. This mortal is put off, and the new man or real man is put on in proportion as mortals realize the science of man and seek the true model. The only course is to take antagonistic grounds against all that is opposed to the health, holiness, and harmony of man, God's image. The great truth in the science of being, that the real man was, is, and ever shall be perfect, is incontrovertible. For man is the image, reflection of God. He is neither inverted nor subverted, but upright and godlike. Only by the illumination of the spiritual sense can the light of understanding be thrown upon this science because science reverses the evidence before the material senses and furnishes the eternal interpretation of God and man. Good demands of man every hour in which to work out the problem of being. Consecration of good does not lessen man's dependence on God, but heightens it. Neither does consecration diminish man's obligations to God but shows the paramount necessity of meeting them. Christian science takes not from the protection, perfection of God, but it ascribes to him the entire glory. By putting off the old man with his deeds, mortals put on immortality. Second Corinthians. 
Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. 1 Peter As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. The miracle of grace is no miracle to love. Whatever inspires of wisdom, truth, or love be it song, sermon, or science, blesses the human family with crumbs of comfort from Christ's table, feeding the hungry and giving living waters to the thirsty. We acknowledge and adore one supreme and infinite God. We acknowledge his Son, one Christ, the Holy Ghost or divine comforter, and man, in God's image and likeness. Let's unite in singing hymn number 382. What is thy birthright, man, child of the perfect one? What is thy father's plan for his beloved son? Hymn number 382. Child of the birth. 
the scientific statement of being from the Christian Science textbook. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation, for God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material. He is <coughs> spiritual. And the correlative scripture from 1 John. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. O man, greatly beloved, peace be unto thee. Amen.